Marsh, you just blew this wide open for me. The distress signal was Grinder. That's why they had his <laughs> GPS coordinates. <laughs> Wait, I need a Grinder fish pun. Grinder. Fish. Mm, I don't think you've got it in yet. I've got it. I'm going to be silent for the rest of the episode. You guys go on without me. <laughs> Maybe there's something with a grouper. I, I don't know. Eli is currently putting out a distress signal to Heath. Like, Heath, I need help. I need help. You, you, you'd get this in 30 seconds. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, as was foretold by the Great Prophecy. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us this week. He's still moving the probably the tray that he keeps the Taco Bell sauce that he hasn't used yet in. I don't even know. But sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am amazing, Noah. I don't believe you, but we'll get to it. <laughs> also joining us this week is returning guest masochist, host of Be Reasonable, co-host of Skeptics with a K, project director for the Good Thinking Society, and more stuff too, Michael Marshall Marsh. Welcome back, sir. Hey, guys. Really nice to be back. Lovely to be here. I'm um, looking forward to a warm welcome that in no way disparages my professional reputation. So that's Well, would direction. you look who it is? <laughs> Skeptic of the year once again by canceling QED. Why don't you trust the vaccines, Marsh? Why don't the vaccines work, Marsh, in your opinion? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes, QED has been delayed. I did think about announcing it to everyone but you, Eli, and just having you come across <laughs> to Manchester by yourself to sit in a massive <laughs> hotel event space with no one around to perform to. Like the whitest paint. You know, you can only have this information if you promise not to share it with Eli Boss. Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty sure all of your listeners would 100% get on board with that. <laughs> All right, so before we get going tonight, I have a super important announcement. Today marks the start of our mostly annual fundraiser, Vulgarity for Charity. Ooh, ooh. Where you supply the charity, we supply the vulgarity. We're going to be teaming up with Tom and Cecil once again to raise money for our favorite charity, Modest Needs. And we've set the ambitious goal of besting our last total of over 300 thousand dollars raised we're already well on our way we've got an anonymous donor matching the first hundred grand but that leaves us a lot of dollars to go and to make it we're going to need your help so if you're new or newish to the show here's how it works you donate money to modest needs and help people on the verge of poverty get ahead and in exchange we insult somebody of your choice on the air over unscathing atheist or cognitive dissonance now uh Last time we did this, we got a little overwhelmed by all the insults, and it took us literally two <laughs> fucking years to get through all of them. So we're going to do it a bit differently this time. We're limiting the on-air insults to 200. That's going to be our top 100 donors, plus another 100 randomly selected from anybody who donates over $50. The fundraiser starts today and lasts through Thanksgiving, so if you want your insult read on air, you need to get the donation in before midnight, November 24th. Just go to modestneeds.org, make a donation, then email proof of your donation, along with who you'd like roasted, to Vulgarity charity for charity at gmail.com and if it's not a celebrity the more you can tell us about the person the better picks help a ton again make a donation at modestneeds.org and then send the receipt along with your roast request to vulgarity for charity at gmail.com and by the way we're going to start picking the random 100 before the drive is over so the sooner you get your donation in the more chances you'll have of getting your roast read on the shows all the details on the show notes as well and with that out of the way tell us marsh what will we be breaking down today Oh, so we watched Finding Jesus, which is the gripping tale of two animated fish who have all sorts of exciting adventures, which exclusively happen off camera because the studio couldn't <laughs> afford real animators. <laughs> you, you know, you, you didn't have air quotes around animated when you said that. I was really worried that you weren't being factual with the audience. But yeah, you got there. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love screensavers, but they aren't psychotically preachy enough for you, <laughs> you will love this movie. Oh, God. I, I spent a long time looking into the people who made this to try to figure out what the hell is going on with them. So they're called Wow Now Entertainment. And fun fact, you know, they are the production company who created this film and they have released 113 animated movies in 2021 alone. What? And it's not even November yet. Oh they, my what? God. Sorry, I thought we were putting out a lot of content. <laughs> wow Now Entertainment. <laughs> Shit, I bow more, down. They've put more animated feature-length films out than you've done GAM episodes. Right? You're a weekly show. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jesus, yeah, that's more than gam and scathing combined. <laughs> Fuck. We got to get some fish screen savers. <laughs> Catch the fuck up. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best to be the worst at? Best worst idea to let Heath make the schedule. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listeners, if I may part the kimono slightly for a moment, Heath's taken over the scheduling this year. He's doing a great job. Lots of good movies, lots of opportunities. But this was very clearly some kind of weird revenge uh huh. Very, very rarely I have turned to the co-hosts on this show and said, hey, I'm watching this movie. It fucking sucks. We should stop. And I almost did that every 45 seconds throughout this <laughs> film. But then the movie would be like, I wonder whose blood we should drink. And I'd be like, oh, OK, OK. <laughs> Another minute movie. You know how crazy this movie is because I shit you not. There is no animation in this animated movie. No. There isn't. No. Mm -mm. No. So that's where I was going with mine. I had best worst animated expressions because they bought every character, you know, on this thing from some Fiverr type website or whatever, and they couldn't afford multiple expressions. <laughs> so yeah. through the entire movie, every character is just smiling ear to ear <laughs> through Grinning. ever increasingly inappropriate things to <laughs> smile through. <laughs> It, it is amazing. It is amazing. I spent a long time looking to try and find the actual clips that they bought to see where I could get the 3D models. And I actually did find some. I'll, I'll come to it. I won't spoil it. But I did actually <laughs> find some of the characters on various uh, stock footage things. But the one that I didn't find is my best worst, which is the best worst. Uh, it's fine, guys. I'm I'm pretty sure I can do a Japanese accent. Don't oh! worry about it. I've, I've got this as Mr. Sushi, the floating piece of sushi, which was weird enough as a concept to introduce before it opened its mouth. <laughs> and it is one of the most offensive accents I've ever heard. And I think it was so offensive that they started to tone it down after the first few sentences. Like he just came in hot and went, oh, no, hang on, that's <laughs> no, that's no, much. no. Gonna, they, they didn't do another take. <laughs> there was just somebody making that dial it back motion off yeah. camera the entire time. <laughs> Whoever Wow Now's Noah is was gesturing at Wow Now's Eli as he started to do that accent <laughs> frantically. All right. So yeah, because like, seriously, okay, one of the most coveted prizes in all of Gam Moviedom is the title of Best Worst Accents. Mm. And this movie made a real play at it. Oh, right? it sure did. It sure did, Noah. <laughs> it, I feel like if it hadn't been for If Footmen Tire You, I may have given that title away in the, in the yeah. beginning of this one. Yeah. Well, maybe what you need is a separate categories of accents. So it's like, this is Best Worst Japanese Accent. This is Best Worst Jamaican Accent. We can really get granular on okay, that yeah. level of, uh, of award. <laughs> okay, you know, this one would get two or three of them. It's like the awards before the Oscars. <laughs> right, the technical gammies. Right, the ones that you just see a montage of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, we've got to squeeze an episode out of like C SPAN animation. So we're going to need a quick strategy session, but we'll be back in a minute with all the stagnancy that is Finding Jesus. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Michael Marshall. I don't know about you, podcast listener, but I. I'm tired of being lied to. Oh, God, here we go. About what it takes to eat a healthy breakfast. Oh, um, yeah, never mind, never mind. Yeah, so Magic Spoon cereal has the amazing flavors you love, but without all the bad stuff. It's got zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, four net grams of carbs in each serving, and only 140 calories. Plus, it's gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. But I know what you're thinking. Are you just going to break my heart with bad news over and over There was and a worldwide pandemic, Eli. By not letting you build your own box with the flavors you like of Magic Spoon cereal? Don't worry. Magic Spoon cereal does let you build your own box. Available flavors to build your own custom bundle are cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, um, never mind. Um, again. I guess. Yeah. So go to magicspoon.com slash gam to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code gam at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash gam and use the code gam to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. Yeah, right. I mean, 
I, I don't even know why. And thank you sure to what... Marsh for ruining my year by canceling QED again. Thank you. <sighs> there it is. There it is. Skeptic of the decade. Okay, guys, the kids are just loving this uh, fish movie, this Finding Nero. Um, um, Nemo? Pretty sure, sure it's Nemo. Yeah, whatever. And as Christians and children's entertainment creators, what's our motto? As, as close, close to what's popular, popular without, without getting, getting sued. sued. Exactly. So uh, what are we What are we thinking? What are we thinking, guys? Uh, sorry, uh, just quick problem. Uh, what's the problem? It's just computer animation, like the stuff in Finding Nemo. It, it's actually some of the most complex movie making in modern times. It's not just really complicated voice acting and animation. It also requires like a deep understanding of filmmaking and storytelling. It's just way, way beyond our scope. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, well, then uh, w- what? Can we afford? Um, I want to say the flying toaster screensaver from Windows ninety five. I see. Well, it looks like we've got ourselves a movie then. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. We made one hundred and thirteen movies this year. <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up blowing a significant portion of our animation budget on Pans Down from Island. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we learn that it's narrated by Inside Out Little Girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah! With a viciously inconsistent English accent. Her yes. accent is yeah. all over the place. It's, it's a delight. It is a tour of the British Isles, is it not? <laughs> yeah. I have her down as someone doing a mean impersonation of the Great British Bake Off narrator. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's only one of the audio delights that we get at the moment, because we also get the theme tune and the sort of the incidental music, which is so clearly a rip-off of Disney that I think it's been done by Donny Alfman. Who's <laughs> <laughs> Donny Alfman guy? <laughs> This whole movie has a, yeah, one letter off the famous guy feel to it. And we right away we meet Muggles and Joy. They are the fish buddies at the heart of our story. They will have grins affixed to them throughout this entire one hour film. They look like someone dumped Joker serum into the ocean. That is <laughs> the only fitting prequel for Finding Jesus. And this is such, I mean, it's obvious that is this, but we still have to make it very clear. This is such a ripoff of Finding Nemo that I wrote in my notes, does copyright have a riffer exemption? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, okay. Let's be clear about how disgusting what they're, what's going on here really is. Yeah. Because this is for like three, four, five-year-old kids. And the idea is that they're not going to be able to clearly distinguish between Finding Nemo, the, the movie that they love, and this thing, if those are always being played, right? If they're being mm-hmm. swapped in and out and everything. So the idea here, I think, is to try to make these, you know, confuse these three and four year olds to thinking that there's some Jesus stuff in Finding Nemo. Well, the other thing is, like, that's not going to work. I have a 17 month old and I showed him four seconds of this and he was like, this is preachy bullshit, man. I'm going to go, <laughs> go throw my toys over that gate. <laughs> It's, it's also, also not going to work because nothing happens. We'll get to it. We won't get to mm-hmm. it because there's nothing to get to. It's well, 70 right, yeah. minutes of nothing happening oh. repeatedly. It's rough. And so I also <laughs> love the way, and we're going to get this over and over again, because what we're going to get is a series of vignettes, episodic vignettes that were meant to be cut out and used independently of one another that we're going to watch all the way through. <laughs> and they all start basically the same. The narrator will say, Muggles and Joy, we're just out doing such and such. And then we'll cut to Muggles and Joy and they'll be saying, we sure we're just out doing such and such, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> we're just on the way back from that amazing adventure that we had with like fireworks and explosions and all yeah. sorts of cool <laughs> stuff that you don't get to see. You just get to see us swimming, the same uh, swimming clip back from yes. our amazing adventure. There were hookers and beer, Muggles. There sure were, Joy. <laughs> God, the opening of each episode might as well be Lou, Lou, Lou. So, <laughs> so yeah, so now we've met Muggles and Joy. It's time to head over to Bubble Town to meet Professor Shark. And so there's a point just before we meet P- Professor Shark where they're talking and he says, yeah, oh, this is fantastic. And then laughs oh, yeah. in the most psychotic of ways that I wrote in my <laughs> notes. I hope there's a shark. And then a shark <laughs> appeared and I thought, oh my God, am I the secret? Have I done this? Have I, <laughs> have I intentioned this into being? You used up your wish. That was a weird <laughs> way. Yeah. And we should point out too, like the voices for these characters are like, if you asked me to do all of them on the spot with a gun to my head. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. They're very teen improv team characters. <laughs> yeah. And the introduction to Pressure Shark is so weird because the voiceover says that he's 
strong but caring. And they put such an emphasis on that that it's got a real sort of spare the rod vibe. Yes. You know, rod, because, you know, they're, they're fish, so spare, spare, the rod, <laughs> spare the rod. That was right there on the table. They left it. They left yeah. it on the table. <laughs> That's going to happen a lot, by the way. When he says fantastic, I was like, oh, man, there's going to be a bunch of these. There aren't. Nope. Right? They're, they're like, Mm-mm. your notes, Marsh, have so much better punnage in them than this movie managed. <laughs> Hey, Wow Nation, look Marsh up. He could make you three, four hundred movies in an afternoon. <laughs> but th- they will do that every time they introduce Professor Shark. Every single time they yes. introduce Professor Shark, they'll be like, who is not too soft on the kids and he would never teach critical race theory. Let's see what he has to say. <laughs> yes. And the, the thing that's really creepy, the, the other thing that's really creepy about it is that somehow they've managed to animate into this shark's face a, what can only be described as, boy-hungry Leah. This is <laughs> <laughs> a pedophile shark if ever I've seen one and believe me I've seen one oh <laughs> yes <laughs> he will constantly accidentally innuendo I mean oh, yes. it, it reaches its peak later on in the movie but he'll constantly be like well there is one thing you can do awkward pause while they <laughs> float in stillness <laughs> <laughs> Well, right. Yeah. That's what happens right away. Right. Like they have start off with this boring ass conversation about how kids are wiser than adults because they don't question our Jesus bullshit. (laughs) And then he starts explaining like as though he's trying to not get to the point intentionally that he has a problem of a personal nature that they may be able to help him. with. (laughs) So all of this is wait for me. The introduction of Jesus at this point really confused me because I was like, well, did Jesus get underwater to spread the good news? Because like famously, he couldn't go underwater. Water no, like you're repelled right. him like the wrong yeah. end of a magnet. It's you're a real right. problem for him. He's just pounding on the water. Fish! <laughs> and on, on top of that, you've got the whole kind of, they say, you know, they're talking about all the, the blessings that fish have gotten from Jesus. And they say, you know, the blessings we've got, like the ocean's big and that's all they've got. And I thought, well, yeah, because in fairness, Jesus would routinely do miracles involving spreading your carcasses around large <laughs> right. roads. So let's not dig too heavily into what did Jesus do for the fish as a question. Like, oh, Jesus, you mean the guy whose best friends would all hunt us and kill us as a profession? They That's do that guy. For, for a living. <laughs> yeah. It's also, they are trying to switch in water words for general Christian words. So at times mm. they'll say things like, our underwater universe or you swim in Jesus's riptide. And I know it's just because like they don't understand what those words mean, but an underwater universe is a horrifying implication. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when we're sinful enough. Jesus is like, oh, wow, I'm going to have to flood the whole universe this time. <laughs> they're, they've gotten to the moon and everything. You know, yeah, so- I know. I got to get that rover on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, yeah, so, but ultimately, eventually, Professor Shirk explains to them that Scary Henry is unhappy and they need to go cheer him up. Right. So they, they do. But the way they introduce Scary Henry is the kids got sort of got like, Scary Henry? Like, red like Heath doing an ad read. Like, yes, <laughs> Scary Henry. Chalk it up. Stick it on the board. <laughs> <laughs> They have this weird moment before they go to see Scary Henry where he's like, you need to remind him of all the blessings we have. And they're like, well, didn't our friend lose a fin? And isn't the ocean just like a constant source of terror and death? And he's like, well, now he can swim faster. Stop asking questions and go yeah. tell Scary Henry and you suck it the fuck up. This is Clive the Porpoise they talk about. Yes. Who, like the weirdest tackling of the problem of evil. It's like, oh, he lost his dorsal fin in a tsunami. Like somehow. I'm not sure how porpoises lose yeah, dorsal right. fins in a tsunami. <laughs> but that helped him swim faster, which only begs the question, why didn't God just not give porpoises dorsal fins if they slow them down? <laughs> that just if God was thinking, he wouldn't have done that. Also, why is the opening bid on this children's movie being an amputee isn't that bad? Quit whining about it. (laughs) Jesus. Yeah. Followed up immediately with, anyway, children, go and find the scary guy and offer him some company, which in (laughs) fairness is entirely consistent with the attitude of the church. No, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So Muggles of Joy head off to talk fucking scary Henry out of suicide, apparently. (laughs) And now there's a little bit of a reversal here, because when you first see scary Henry, he's just a smiling crab. And you're like, oh, that was lazy. But then you hear how Jewish his voice is. And he is, in fact, a very scary Henry. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Okay. so this is the first time it becomes painfully clear that they could not afford animations other than smiles. Yeah. It is comical the extent to which they're like, 
well, you sure look sad. And they cut up to this just giant smiley face with crab claws sticking out of it. And he's like, yeah, I sure am in the dumps. <laughs> I pray for the sweet release of death. Well, sorry. It's scary. <laughs> I pray for the sweet release of yeah. death. <laughs> <laughs> This is also one of the moments we get a lovely bit of the voiceover as well, because like it's scary, Henry. We're gonna go get to the bottom of it. It's like <laughs> yes. the Eli school of British accents. It's it's astonishing. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, there are not a lot of British accents I can make fun of, but this is one. <laughs> <of them. laughs> but scary Henry tells them that he's homeless. To which their response is, "Don't think of it that way." <laughs> yes. <laughs> They tell him it's a terrible attitude. Like, look on the yes. bright side. So will, that'll sort me out. Thank you. <laughs> and, and Henry's basically like, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Scary Henry. I want to scary Henry to start doing space work. Just like, oh, I didn't think of it that way. Oh, here I am inside my invisible house. Thanks, Muggles and Joy. You guys don't suck a bunch of ass. Oh, <laughs> why don't I watch my invisible TV? I'll tell you what. Uh, the person who envisioned this movie also wanted scary Henry to move around to do some space work, <laughs> too. But that's not. Wasn't in the cards. No. They had 110 other movies to make that way. Right. <laughs> exactly. And, and like he responds to the, to their uh, just look on the bright side of it less than enthusiastically. And they berate him for not being grateful enough for being homeless and for their only amount of help amounting to get over yourself. That's the, that's what they berate him for. Yeah, right. Like his problem is that people keep calling him names and, and, scare, uh, and make him feel bad. And their solution is to not stop that. <laughs> do not stop doing that. The only way to help him is stop doing that. It'll be fine. Right, right. The, the whole Scary Henry moniker, obviously, you know, at first when you see the silly crab and you're like, oh, Scary Henry, maybe it's, you know, just a juxtaposition kind of a thing or whatever. But they never explain it. He he seems to clearly explain that he's bothered by it and then they just mm. keep using that term. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But eventually they're like, all right, well, this asshole doesn't even want to be cheered up. Maybe we should go see old mrs woodley and and maybe she can cheer him up and i'm like is this like one of those older starfish in your area are down to fuck type situations <laughs> <laughs> no email no bullshit just see mrs woodley now <laughs> so yeah so they go to see mrs woodley the elderly starfish she doesn't look elderly in any way or have an elderly a voice. They couldn't afford mm. any of that shit. So they just say over and over again that she's elderly. So just to be clear, we have devolved from the smiling crab that at least was cranky to just like, hey, Mrs. Woodley, the starfish who is definitely wearing a hat. Hi, I'm not wearing a hat. Oh, <laughs> shit. And there's a weird thing as well, because she says, you know, I last saw you as hatchlings, which for me just opened up a fascinating conversation of like early ichthyological development and this kind <laughs> learning curves that this movie just does not address. And, and it's, it's all the worse for not addressing those questions. It gets, they get weirder <laughs> as we go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They start putting time frames on shit later. And yeah, so, okay, here's the thing. I didn't yet realize that we were just doing series of vignettes. So I assumed that like, old Mrs. Woodley and, and, and Scary Henry were going to fall in love at some point or something, that this was a love interest thing. And I'm like, okay, so five arms, I can see why they thought of her. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she's just there to quote Bible passages at them. Yeah, he needs a lesson in gratitude, apparently. And I That's wrote in my exactly notes. exactly what they say. I wrote, homeless people, not nearly grateful enough, this movie. <laughs> yeah. I put in my notes, do crabs even have bootstraps? Like, we're talking about, you know, sea sponges and welfare breams. Yeah. <laughs> welfare breams is fantastic. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's pretty good. Yeah. So, no, but to be clear, the moral so far is suck it the fuck up, suicidal kid. Yep. You don't have it that bad. <laughs> no, I will not stop calling you scary, whatever your fucking name is. Yeah, exactly. That's how I know you, goddammit. So, okay, so then they they literally go back to where the scene before last was to tell Henry what happened in the last scene. Yeah, yeah. They're bringing that advice back to Scary Henry, who they still insist on calling Scary Henry. Yes. Brilliant. Just keep, keep that one going. Absolutely fine. And then it gets to the point where the animators are fucking with him, right? Because they go like, hey, Scary Henry, are you feeling any better? And he goes, do I look like I'm feeling any better? And he's smiling from like, <laughs> ear to, of course he looks you like look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> completely ruins the fit. But yeah. At one point, Muggles literally goes, That's a smile. And I was like, he's been smiling the entire time. Yeah. He, how were these animators not communicating with these voice <laughs> actors? 
Yeah, and, and to be absolutely clear, this is the point where I started thinking, I am 99% certain you just bought a clip of Scary Henry from somewhere. I looked that up, keeping up the tradition of doing way too much research on who's in the movies. I actually found where they got Scary Henry from. I got yes. the cartoon crab. And it's, it felt a little bit like when we find the actor on IMDb and look like what they've been in or when someone's been in an ad before they got famous. Oh, there's, there's Scary Henry on that website. Oh, God, that was before he was in all these Jesus films. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's like seeing Sly Stallone in the deodorant commercial or whatever. Yeah, no, right. in the porn. It was well, that, <laughs> it was not that good. Come on now. So, but then they explained to Scary Henry that Jesus, and he's like, "Wow, you know, that's now I feel way better." So he puts down his revolver and decides to uh, to give it another go. <laughs> and they start like just quoting Bible stories to him. And I really wanted Henry to start quoting some select Bible verses back to them. And I'm pretty sure no one can think of some, some fun ones to air at that point. But it, Psalms 137.9 would be nice. They're, on, they're in the book of Psalms anyway. So That's like true. Bashing yeah. their heads against the rocks would be <laughs> apropos. That would be very funny, too, with these animations because they're fish. They're flapping around. Right. <laughs> All right. So and then after that, they go back to the scene before the scene before that to tell Professor Shark about the last scene. It's like the movie is closing parentheses. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and in case any, any of the listeners are in any way under any illusion as to what we're seeing, we're seeing literally the exact last scene because the animation is exactly, if you turn the sound off, it is the same fucking scene. Yep. They've just put slightly different wording over the top of it. Right. Yep. Which we should point out because Professor Shark and Muggles and Joy are the through line of this film, we will watch... I would say another 14 to 15 times. Yeah. 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 Conservatively, 14 to 15 times, we will see this exact scene where they swim up to Professor Shirk. And I say swim up to, but we see them swimming. We see Professor Shirk waiting, and then we see all three of them together. They didn't have... <laughs> all three moving at the same time kind of funny. Which is weird because I've seen clips of other films they produced and they do have Professor Shark swimming. So I, I wonder whether this film made them enough money to buy that second clip of <laughs> Professor Shark. <laughs> all right, guys, we did Finding Jesus on the seven-day free trial. I think it's time to let this bad boy expire and spend the big bucks. So, yeah, so Professor Shark is like, well, did you make Scary Henry happy? And they're like, yeah. He's like, how are they? are like, Jesus. He's like, yeah, that tracks. Nice. Yeah. I demand an underwater Jesus at some point in this series. You you get the feeling several times that he's going to, like, come floating up out of a cave and be like, well, actually, Joy, I am the way No. But this, this is the end of their first adventure. Their first adventure is... A pedophile shark made us go talk to a homeless guy that everyone's mean to and scared of. We told that guy to just crab the hell up and be thankful for the nothing that he has. The end? That is, yep. the, that yep. is the adventure. Yeah. No, the, the fucking narrator cuts in right there and then goes, and then they left. <laughs> <laughs> with a with a heart full of gratitude, off they go to to do some fun things you can't see. But yeah, trust me. Exactly, to interact with a number of other objects. <laughs> <laughs> and as, as they swim off, first of all, we get, throughout my notes, I've got and screensaver, where the yeah. only way they can do <laughs> right. like cuts between transitions between scenes is by throwing up a, a screensaver of like a turtle swimming or something. Yeah. So we see a lot more screensaver footage of water than I was expecting. And then as they're swimming away, Muggles is just talking to Joy about how great Joy is and what a good friend Joy is. And a lot of his conversation is only ever that. It's like, Jesus, guys, just get a fucking pond or something. Just <laughs> take it aside, get a fucking pond. Also, we should point out, too, that Muggles has this, like, they, they were trying, they were going for, like, a goofy, distinct laugh with Muggles. Mm -hmm. But, like, the voice actor could never remember exactly how he did it last time. So it's <laughs> always a little different, but it's always weird, and it's always really fucked up. It's always... Just a little too long not to be in a horror movie, right? right. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's two beats past the end of the the laugh. It's yeah, like, and right. the laugh finishes there, and then the two more beats, you go like, oh no, that's gonna haunt my nightmares. Yeah, no. right. Slip exactly. into nightmare territory. No, I got I gotta bite Muggle's tongue and tell riddles back and forth. I know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so but then we we head back to Bubble Town. It's time for the second episode, so they meet Professor Shark again. 
So they do, but at this point, Joy is talking about how there's predators everywhere in the sea, which is quite a dark thing to be introducing at the start of episode two, basically, this kid's show. And I thought, is this is this going to be the Stranger Danger episode? Where they're going to be like, do you know that 1.2 million fish get abducted in the US every year? And then they're going to be, they're going to be swimming along with a banner saying, hatchlings don't just go missing. <laughs> Suddenly, Professor Shark's trying to get him to put on masks. We realize he's part of the cabal. Yes. <laughs> also, there's a point here where I know this is a little tiny piece, but there's a moment where fucking Muggles fat shames Joy. Yes! Yeah, that's right? So She's like, oh, I'm so full. And he's like, yeah, you need to swim around without your fucking mouth open and eating all that goddamn plankton, fat ass. <laughs> yeah, he says it like it's a motto as well. Like I always say, swim with your mouth closed so you won't gobble plankton. I thought this is educational programming at its finest for Christian. <laughs> <laughs> this is life lessons you can take home with you. Yeah. And then we introduce the plot to this episode. And if this is one of the weirdest introductions in the history of goddamn time. Back me up on this, guys. The shark says to the kids, he's like, oh, hey, I need you for an important mission. Our mutual friend Marlo is stuck in seaweed, and if he doesn't get out soon, he'll die. Mm, he will he'll die. die. Mm -hmm. And then they spend like four minutes talking about how great Jesus is. Yeah, he literally... All right, anyway, let me take my time here to say that you guys are doing a great job. <laughs> if they had intercut shots of, of Marlo like struggling yeah, and like that's the light wanted, just like really dis like Marlo suffocating in a distressed entangled mess because <laughs> this scene went on for so long I had to pause it rewind it and get Nicola up to watch and so like yeah Marlo our friend he's uh he's gonna die if we don't get there immediately immediately you say yeah 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 he's been stuck for several minutes at least oh because we're we're two minutes into this conversation so <laughs> this is two of those minutes this is two of the minutes he's been stuck and they just continue like, but go and see Pickles first he's got a couple of minutes head start right so if you just told me to go and see Pickles immediately at the start of this conversation we'd have been with him but now he's got the head start <laughs> all of this I just want while Marlo keeps cutting to him tangled in seaweed really distressed writhing around that's what I really really wanted oh god my favorite aspect of this too is that there's a moment where like you know he explains what's going on and then the narrator sort of summarizes it for us but what we see is that he says like, oh, and Marlo will die if we don't help him right away. And then they just all just stand there staring at each other for yep. 14 fucking seconds. Yeah, just just bobbing up and down. It's, yep. it's, it's <laughs> absolutely amazing. We'll do everything in our power to help a friend in need, says Muggles, two minutes after learning that friend has been suffering <laughs> yes. and suffocating for several minutes. And every line, every single line of the scene has a strong... Look, guys, we all know that Marlo is a total dick and we want him to let him die. <laughs> yeah. But we also need plausible deniability. So yeah. let's just give it just long enough and then we'll, oh, Marlo's dead. Oh, we did everything we could. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the Jeffrey Epstein suicide investigation of the fish world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, he did it. Trust me. And the other thing about this that I thought was really weird is that Professor Shark introduces it by saying, you know, Marlo has to keep moving, otherwise he'll suffocate. So I know that's sharks. You're thinking of sharks. Right. <laughs> You're a shark. You're not currently moving. Why would you introduce that fact when we can literally see the animal that famously has to keep moving unless it suffocates, not moving? I want Professor Shark to chalk out during this conversation too. <laughs> well, especially since later when we meet Marlo, he won't be fucking moving. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, he will not. I have a tiny scripting note here. At one point, they mentioned that Marlo sent out a distress signal. Yeah. Mm. And they just sort of breeze over it. But it's great because you can tell they were like, Marlo, we've got a... How did he scream underwater? He... Where did the... How to fish? No. Yeah. <laughs> he said our distress signal. That's fine. He's, we're, we're like ships. We're like, we're like spaceships. Also, Joy asks, do you have his coordinates? Like what, you got a fucking GPS or a map yeah. or opposable thumbs? Why are you talking about coordinates? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. I don't think they meant to build so goddamn much suspense into Marlo's fate in this thing, but while it's there, I, we might as well fucking use it. So we're going to pause for a quick break, but we'll be back in a flash with even more Finding Jesus. Lulu Lou, doing skeptic stuff. Skeptic stuff is my favorite stuff. Aha! Uh gotcha! Noah, Eli, what, what, what are you guys doing in my house? Two words, Marsh. Hello, Tushy. Nicola, get a knife. No, get a knife. No, no, Marsh, not that 
tushy. We just found out about the Hello Tushy bidet. It cleans your butt way better than wiping, cuts your toilet paper use down by 80%, saves trees and all the thousands of gallons of water used to convert them into toilet paper, and it comes with a book full of poop jokes. So we figured, you know, what else must you Europeans be hiding? Ooh, perhaps this fancy hand wash station? That That's a coffee maker. Ow, hot, hot, whatever. Anyways, Tushy sent us a bidet to try, and I never realized that luxury was so affordable. Yeah, Hello Tushy attaches to your existing toilet in less than eight minutes with no electrician or plumber needed. What else attaches to your toilet, Marsh? You have to tell us. All right, so you guys not knowing that bidets existed aside, that, that does actually sound pretty good. Where can I get one? Well, you can give the gift of a clean bum to yourself or a loved one this holiday season and get 10% off plus free shipping right now at hellotushy.com slash awful. That's hellotushy.com slash awful for 10% off and free shipping. Aha! What's this tank I found on the back of the toilet? I bet it's filled with delicious drinking water, isn't it, Marsh? Yep, yep, you got me. Please don't drink the water on the back of my toilet. It's it's so very dear and very important to me. Don't touch Noah, it. Noah, get the mugs. Get the mugs. I'm on it. This. I'm on it. And so I said, him, that's not coral. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> hey, 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 fellas. Oh, fuck. It's muggles and joy. Oh, God. Those those Jesus freaks, right? Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Just, just be cool. Be cool. They'll go away. Well, hello, Mr. Fish and Mr. Squimbo. How are you on this glorious day that God has made? Uh, we're well, we're fine, Joy. Yeah, h- how are you, Joy? Well, I'm just enjoying this beautiful day that Jesus has made. Oh, oh two sentences in a row there. Hey, uh, Muggles, did you hear that Flips got caught in a big tuna net? Oh, well, gosh, that's fin fortunate. Uh, that doesn't really work. That's, uh, mm, but at mm. least he's in heaven now with our father, Jesus Christ. Isn't that right, Joy? It sure is. Uh, actually, uh, Joy, Muggles, I, I, I've been meaning to ask you, how come you guys believe in Jesus, even though, like, we don't have souls? We, we don't? Oh, yeah, no, pretty much every denomination of Christianity believes that we don't have souls. And, and Jesus even proved himself to his disciples by aiding them in a fish genocide. So, you know, what's the point? I mean, I guess there is no law but will murder, murder. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I like them better now. Oh, yeah, me too. Huge improvement. Huge. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Muggles and Joyce swimming off in search of Marlo. Another great, we couldn't afford the animation moment where the narrator's like, they swam faster than they'd ever swam before. And it shows us the exact same swimming away <laughs> animation we get every time they swim away from anything. <laughs> but they do find Pickles here and Pickles like, oh, don't worry, Marlo freed himself. Yeah, just takes over. And this was the first time that I thought, oh, you're going to just keep fucking me this movie, aren't you? <laughs> you're not going to show me anything because you can't afford to. Right. Yeah, exactly. Though that was slowly dawning on us all at this moment. Well, actually, it took me another minute because I spent like the next two minutes of watching this film desperately trying to figure out what the fuck kind of accent Pickles was supposed to have. Great question. I believe it is either Jamaican or Scottish. Marsh has Irish in his notes. I have Scottish. You have Jamaican. I was really surprised that 80% of Eli's notes weren't just hoitity toitity. Yeah. I assumed was coming, coming out of this. If they'd nailed the accent, they would have been. I wrote in my notes, whatever accent he went with, it is the opposite of Marsh's Texan accent. <laughs> Compliment accepted. Yeah. <laughs> so. Also, there's so much weird innuendo in this show. Like, there's a moment here where Joy is talking. They're talking about Marlo, right? They're like, yeah, yeah Marlo used his big sword to free himself. And she's like, oh, big sword, huh? She just, she says, oh, you know, he packs so much power into that body of his. <laughs> yeah, it's so sexual. It's so, so sexual. And then there's like eight seconds of creeping silence as they all bob and <laughs> stare at each other. <laughs> It's amazing. Well, Joy, <laughs> <laughs> I also have a lot of power in my body. Let's just say it's a good thing I'm already wet. <laughs> <laughs> but also, they start this scene as well, talking to Pickles by saying, "We came as fast as you as we could." It's like, no, you didn't. We just watched you <laughs> have like an eight minute conversation about how friendship is such a wonderful gift from Jesus, while you had eight minutes of knowing your friend was suffocating. <laughs> you did not come as fast as you could. Nope. So, but yeah, so then Pickles sends them off to, so that they can just see Marlo and, and, and chat with him about the danger they didn't help. 
a fucking lick with. Now, if you've ever played Donkey Kong Country, you'll be familiar with Marlowe. Right, this is on guard. This is the goddamn swordfish from Donkey Kong Country. I was furious <laughs> yeah. about this. They were aiming for a on guard the swordfish like game, and they threw out all the assets. And now that's what I call movies. Was like, hey, we'll take those if you're done. With them. We'll take them. <laughs> you're saying you've got a still hovering image of a fish. You say, well, we are in <laughs> that market. It could be animated with a slight bob, so he looks like he's sort of somehow air humping the water. Yeah, of course we can. Do that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. We can't not do that as it happens. <laughs> there is a point in this film where so many of the characters have been bobbing, like, all together at the same slow rate that, ironically, I felt seasick. <laughs> <laughs> they also have a weird moment where they're like, oh, we came to rescue you. And he, this movie seems really astounded that you would save anyone's life. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, wow, I can't believe you would save me from dying. What an incredible thing that not everyone would do. Yeah. Well, and then they spent the, the fucking fish. Muggles and Joy spend like three minutes explaining why they give the least fucking shit about Marlo as though that's a great mystery. They're like, yeah, a lot of people would wonder why we would befriend someone as worthless and shitty as you. But it turns <laughs> out Jesus would have us love everybody. <laughs> and when when they first met Marlo, I really wanted him to be fucking irate with how long it took and how he got to see more help. Like, where the fuck were you guys? Where were you? I was literally done. I, I put out the distress signal. I know somehow I know you got the distress signal. I was like fucking Morse coding out my coordinates. It's my, my grid coordinates to Professor Shark. Where the fuck were you? But no, he's he's flattered and grateful that they did nothing of value. Nothing. Absolutely nothing of value. Yeah. They say at the end of it as well, like, oh, no, Marlo, we want to be your friend for a long time to come, which which is rough when their life expectancy is under three years. Like, and, and even less if they keep hanging out with their natural predators like fucking sharks. Like, guys, yeah. Don't go near the shark. It's the toughest lesson Professor Shark has to teach them. Yeah, yeah. And also, is it just, uh, they give them a little shit here, too, right? They're like, all right, well, next time, don't make us come all the fucking way out here, Marlo. <laughs> yeah, it's like, don't make a habit of getting into this kind of trouble. It's like, you did nothing of any value, and then you still felt you could be preach about it. You really are Christians. You've yeah. Got this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Short of calling themselves a charity while they did this, they yeah. did the Christian <laughs> So, yeah, so it, he's like, hey, you know what? As a thank you for coming way too late to save me, I want to take you to my favorite algae bed. And this was, I think, the moment where it occurred to me just how little we were going to get, right? Because we mm. watched these fish say, wow, what a large algae bed that's just off camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> but I, I really wanted it, the I wanted the algae to also be anthropomorphized, like screaming in agony and terror <laughs> as Marlo descends upon them. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Don't get me. <laughs> Somehow smaller fish show up to rescue the algae. We're here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got I your distress the, signal. The, the algae, the algae, <laughs> I put out the distress signal to all my friends. Where are, why are they here? <laughs> <laughs> you know they're Muslim because of algae, Sierra. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> That's that not a lot. No. It's not a lot there. And this is where they say that the fact that they found algae, like, oh, Jesus sure works in mysterious ways. It's like, guys, you found some algae. In an ocean filled with algae. It's just that's not mysterious. It's that's, that's fucking run the mill. <laughs> you can't not get algae. We we try to. It's hard for us to avoid. Also, there's this great moment. This might be. Oh, it's not quite, but this is very close to the high point of the movie where Marlo the swordfish starts telling Joy and Muggles that they remind him of David and Jonathan from the Bible. Yeah. Mm. So for those of you who haven't read the Bible, I should be super clear. That is super duper a gay relationship yeah right david and jonathan were a couple of dudes that were fucking in the bible yeah it's unquestioned the bible is like loved him more than his wife as one would love a wife you know with a penis in a butt i'm the right. bible <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> there's even a part where jonathan like strips naked before david and you're like oh okay and he brings that up like he'd give you the shirt off his back he totally does mm -hmm. he goes marlo says in the show well they were such good friends that jonathan gave him the clothes off his back which i can only assume <laughs> is marlo like doing a kind of coded indication to see if they're down it's like, you know, you guys are like uh, Jonathan and David. Um, how do you feel about my massive sword and my body that packs an awesome <laughs> yeah. amount of power? 
There are so many scenes in this that play like those little fish are about to get molested. Yeah, oh. way too many. Marsh, you just blew this wide open for me. The distress signal was grinder. That's why they had his <laughs> GPS coordinates. <laughs> Wait, I need a grinder fish bun. Grinder. Mm, fish. I don't think you've got it in yet. No. I've got it. I'm going to be silent for the rest of the episode. You guys go on without me. <laughs> Maybe they're set with a grouper. I, I don't know. Eli's currently putting out a distress signal to Heath. Like, Heath, I need help. I need help. You, you, you'd get this in 30 seconds. <laughs> All right. So, but anyway, so Muggles and Joy head back to Brinder. Brinder. Oh, okay. Yeah. Brine. Oh, okay. It's briny. There's one point where they are talking about David and Jonathan, where he says, you know, David and Jonathan, they actually turned against his own father. You know, for David, Jonathan turned against his own father. And mm -hmm. I want him to carry that thought on. You know, he turned against his own father, presumably breaking the holy commandment to honor thy father and mother, and thus presumably committing an act as bad as murder and theft in the eyes of God. <laughs> Just keep that thought going. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it does go long enough that you start wondering what the fuck moral Marlo is trying to pull out of this thing. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, you guys are just like Jonathan and David. Kill your dads for me. <laughs> <laughs> but the moral here is very clearly that children should go rushing into danger if they hear a vague rumor that an adult might be in difficulty. That's obviously the moral. In some direction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they say they're two weeks old. At one point in this, they say they are two weeks old, which is a weird fucking thing for them to say. They are two mm. weeks old, these fish. Yeah, the checklist of this movie so far is go off to help adults in mortal danger and homeless people who are known for their fearsome nature. <laughs> and bear in mind, at the start of this episode, Joy says she's she's happy to be back from the open ocean because there's so many predators out there. Right. And Professor Shark is like, oh, yeah, yeah, go back out with those predators. Yes. So there's a lot of there's a lot going on in this. Yeah, but but I guess they survive long enough to go back to Professor Shark again and, and explain this the details of that vignette to him. <laughs> right. And did we all have that Professor Shark would have been a lot more help in that situation than waiting on two two-week-old tiny fish <laughs> to eventually right. get to Marlo? Like, as soon as Shark heard that Marlo was in danger, why the fuck didn't he just go, oh, I'm a, I'm a shark. I'm pretty big. I'm probably going to get there quicker. I've got teeth. I can... And then, I, yeah, bite through the bite through the seaweed. This is, this is sorted. <laughs> Me and Marlo dated. We try to be cool, but we, like, don't show up to the same places. Rawr, mm. I'm Professor Shark. So, and I want to talk about the end of this scene because they're like, oh, we learned so much. Jesus loves us. But then there's this fucking moment. We all have notes about it where they finish talking and there is a solid four seconds of bobbing fish silence at the end of this scene. <laughs> like someone forgot to tell the animation cut. Yes, 100%. I suspect this movie is exactly one hour long, which is what they needed to get five instead of two dollars from Amazon Prime where this movie is available. <laughs> and I guarantee you this four seconds helped make it to the hour. They were like, just uh, float the fish for a little bit, Frank. Just for a little bit. There we go. We made it to an hour, everyone. So I just, I, I'm sorry to know and your joke, Eli, but as somebody who goes to a lot of trouble to make sure our episodes are exactly an hour long over on our sister show, Scathe the Atheist, I want to point out that this is not an exact, exactly, an, they're not putting that kind of work into it. But yes, yeah, so <laughs> 68 minutes. Yeah. And at least 20 minutes of that is the same scene of Muggles and Joy are returning to the reef <laughs> yeah. with exactly the same narration. Exactly. That, that's how they made time. And they went all the time and they went, ah, fuck it. We're not going to go yeah, back out. Exactly. Just, we'll run as it is. It's it's fine. It's fine. We, we cut to screensaver again. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then the narrator cuts in to tell us that we're moving on to another vignette. They're coming back for another amazing adventure that we didn't get to see. <laughs> and this is round about the time that I was just about to come to the realization that we're watching episodes because at this point I thought, is this looping again? Am I in Groundhog Day? Do I have to have sex with Andy McDowell? Is that what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> No, Hugh Grant took that for your people. You don't have to. <laughs> yeah, she gets one. She only gets yeah, one of us. He made that sacrifice. He's the Jesus of Britain. <laughs> yeah, no, I hadn't quite figured it out either. I, I wrote my notes. I'm like, hey, this is the same woohoo and yay scene from before, but they added a we in the middle like that was going to throw us off the set. Hold on. While swimming at regular pace. They're yes. going regular pace going wee, which is like you and I walking down the street going wee. Yep. <laughs> All right, so then they, they reintroduce Muggles and Joy. This time they're coming back from exploring other reefs. Again, they all have to start off with the narrator saying what they were just doing and then Muggles and Joy validating that narrator like she's super fragile. 
Yep. And it's it's so frustrating. So much of the action in this movie happens off screen. It's fucking Rose and Joy and Mugglestein are dead. That's what we're watching. <laughs> <right now. laughs> so yeah, so they're like, ah, what's the plot of this one? They're like, I don't know, but I'm sure Professor Shark will. So they go see him and make I'm gonna say nineteen minutes of small talk. Oh my god. <laughs> Have you ever been this is the only way I can describe it. If you've ever been to a wedding where you are with people who don't belong in your social circle ever, but then you're at their table and you just realize like this wedding's two and a half hours long and the weather ain't going to cut it. So you just like start listing entertainments. That's this conversation. Oh, with God, it, it is. It's painful. It's fucking painful. OK, so here's how bad it is. Here are my these are consecutive notes that I wrote. I wrote it is impossible to express how meaningless and boring this conversation is. Oh, wait, here you go. When Professor Shirk finally brought this around to the Bible lesson, I described it as finally. <laughs> and I've got some notes on this as well. I've got some notes on this. So for one thing. They've just come back from being missionaries, apparently. They've been missionary fish. They've mm-hmm. been fissionaries, and they don't use fissionaries. <laughs> nope. And I don't think I can forgive them for not using fissionaries when they've literally yep. just been missionaries and they're fish. Yep. So that is that is annoying. <laughs> I realise, I, I just wrote, all of this is, a thing just happened off screen, and now we're going to bob up and down while retelling it to a shark. Yeah. And in this instance, it was them giving away algae to strangers, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. While Muggles apparently introduced himself to so many strangers, it feels like his fin will fall off. And it took me a while to realize by fin, he means hand from handshaking. I was like, oh, you've been introducing yourself to so many strangers that your fin is about to fall off. Like, thank God you kept that off screen, is all I'm going to say. <laughs> you, we, don't, we don't need to see Muggles gangbanging his way around the nearest coral reef. Like one, one reef Speak over. for we your don't goddamn self, Mark. <laughs> I learned a trick from Marlo. <laughs> <laughs> but also, they keep talking about the Bible. No, I don't think any of these fish read the Bible. I can't see a single Bible. <laughs> and noticeably, Bubble Town doesn't have a single church. And then I thought... What universe is this movie creating? Like, is the Jesus that they're talking about our Jesus? Or did they have their own fish Jesus? Oh, and shit. Oh. Did, did ancient fish nail a Jesus fish to an underwater cross? <laughs> and then then when he ascended to heaven, was he just being like reeled in by fishermen? Because I want them to make that movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that would imply an existence of normal secular fish who the, these fish like swim up to and they're like, hey, have you heard the good news? And like, oh, my God, I'm so glad I'm going to eat you right now. This is such a <laughs> one. I'm, I'm just going to stab you in the eye and let you die and float to the surface. <laughs> so and anyway, eventually they get to the end of this boring ass conversation. Professor Shark is like, well, why don't you take the rest of the day off and just go have fun? And they're like, wow, no plot at all, huh? <laughs> so they go to see their friend. Fizzy the Blowfish. Yeah, and Fizzy explains to them why it's so much better to give than receive, which I think is why Muggle's fin is about to fall off. (laughs) (laughs) Well, for fuck's sake, they have the same boring conversation about giving away algae that they just had with the shark again. Yeah, but Fizzy's got an interesting take on charity here. Fizzy's like, hey, you guys seem a little prideful about all the good you did. Remember what Jesus said? Don't invite your friends to dinner invite fizzy's words not mine cripples because they are useless and can't pay you back (laughs) yeah yeah and i thought oh god please let this episode involve muggles and joy having a dinner party with lots of fish with all manner of disabilities just to really test the capabilities of this 3d animator like show me how you're gonna do like like octopus missing an eye and starfish mission missing a leg. I want to see how how far your animation skills actually go. Oh, I got to tell you. Well, first of all, nowhere at all. They're animated. Here's how far they go. They bob up and down just a mm. little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because the whole point of this this episode, the whole point of this entire movie is you know fuck showing, fuck telling. Retelling gets the Drake doing the pointy thing panel of the meme. That's what this this entire film is based on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not only did they tell us about what they did off screen, but now they're telling us about the fact that they told us about what the hell happened off screen. Yeah. (laughs) And once again, we get some great innuendo here where uh, if you just read this as fizzy trying to fuck muggles and him being too naive to realize it, it becomes way more entertaining. Yeah, very much (laughs) so. Tips for the listeners. And then we get more fat shaming. 
Oh, you're right about the yeah. whale. Yeah. They're going to go thank the whale. And he's like, don't worry. We'll just look for the biggest whale we can find. And Joy is like, don't say she's fat. She's a girl. And I wrote in my notes, a movie that has not managed to work animation into its animated movie has worked <laughs> body shaming and sexism into it twice. I'm not mad. Yep. I'm just impressed. Yeah. I'm not even mad. <laughs> and if you're wondering if they're going to manage to get racism as well, just <laughs> you wait. Okay. They've nailed ableism. ableism oh, yeah. Is in <laughs> yep. here in spades. So then fucking Muggles of Joy swim onto another scene where they will boringly converse with yet another character about the same damn conversation <laughs> they just had twice in a row. <laughs> so this is the whale that originally showed them where the algae bed was so that they would have so much algae to give away to strangers, right? So they're now going to thank that whale for all the algae. Hey, Noah, can I can I apologize for something? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I think about the fact that, like, you, you really are, like, one of the best minds I'll ever have the privilege of knowing. And just for a second, the <laughs> fact that it was directed at the plot of this fucking movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real <laughs> bummer, man. I was just... I was just thinking about how many brilliant diatribes you've written and then you being like, no, 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 this is the whale that showed them the algae <laughs> from earlier. Also, Eli, none taken. None taken. That's, that's fine. Marsh, you and I belong here, man. <laughs> we found our level up. We found <laughs> our place. <laughs> so, yeah, so they're complimenting Patty the whale on, on showing them where the algae was and they're like we have a gift to give you in return we're going to show you where all the crustaceans hide from you all the time <laughs> <laughs> oh this is all good because they swim with Paddy the Whale to the gift that they've got now which is a seabed that was already there mm -hmm. filled with cr crustaceans which in the this universe must be sentient beings because to be clear crabs are crustaceans yep We've already seen crabs talking and, and feeling down and having massive smiles while talking about how <laughs> depressed they are. And I just really, really wanted the whale to eat Scary Henry at this yes! point. I wanted the cameo of Scary Henry to come right back in. It's a looming shot of the whale appearing behind Scary Henry and Muggles is just like, now you're scared, Henry, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got this massive fixed grin still, this absolutely terrifying grin. Yeah, but so... I want to be super clear on this one, too, because we're sort of wrapping up this vignette, believe it or not, at this point, after having the same conversation three times in a row. The moral seems to be, and please correct me if I'm wrong, do nice things without expecting a reward and you might just get rewarded. <laughs> yes, that is exactly it. That is absolutely it. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, rewarding others. They even say this to Professor Shark in a moment. Mm -hmm. says, you know, rewarding others without being coerced will reward us in ways we never imagined. Which is coercion. Yes! That is coercion. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, uh, the, the fucking Freeman on the land without coercion that they kept throwing in there, though, right? It doesn't count if you're paying fucking taxes. <laughs> Professor Shark starts talking about how taxation is theft. <laughs> <laughs> And, and because they are back with Professor Shark, you know, they say, oh, Professor Shark, the look on her face was priceless. Or, you know, about $40 on Shutterstock, I think. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. It was a giant grin, as always it is. I was writing in my notes at this point, guys, is Heath mad at us? <laughs> <laughs> they, they also, Shark also says, you know, I'm certain tomorrow will be just as magical as today. And I said, well, when you're setting the bar that high, then... <laughs> And I love this poor narrator has to wrap it up, but nothing's happened in the narrator. So the narrator's just like, and then they just kept swimming on, I guess. Mm. Mm. <laughs> With hearts full of gratitude and love for God, muggles and joy swim forever onward. Yes. And it, it sounds like a fucking curse. Yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> forever onward does sound like there's some kind of afterlife punishment involved. <laughs> And Muggles and Joy will never stop swimming until you solve this riddle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we open our next vignette with the same so anyway intro as the others, right? The narrator's like, Muggles and Joy were coming back from frolicking all day in the water. And they're like, wow, sure did enjoy that frolicking all day in the water. <laughs> yeah. So at this one, I realized with each successive vignette, 
I'm displaying a different emotion. Like I was actively angry this time that the segment <laughs> opened with them talking about adventures we didn't get to see. And I thought, am I going through the stages of grief? <laughs> on a previous vignette, I was like, no, it can't be. It can't possibly be. And I was thinking, all right, maybe the next one will be better. It's fine. The next one will be better. And so I'm going through denial. I'm going through bargaining. I've hit anger at this point. <laughs> Depression follows pretty clearly. Right. And then acceptance. Yeah. No, it's and then right. acceptance. Yeah. By the end, this was Martian's favorite movie. <laughs> All right. So uh, anyway, the, the key here, though, is that they didn't do their homework today, which was a field trip during school hours. Whatever. Doesn't fucking matter. It's great because you can feel the writers losing their ability to write this movie. They're like, oh, muggles, we were supposed to f- fuck. What's a fish's homework? Mm. Look <laughs> yeah. at Coral and we were out not doing that <laughs> well, they, were, they were out playing in the open open water which they they say oh we love playing in the open water but the very last episode joy was scared of being in the open water because it was filled with predators and right. rife with danger and i thought joy clearly gets off on the danger and i thought is is this film a remake of flatliners is this Ooh. is this slackliners <laughs> <laughs> oh, slackline back out i love that <laughs> So, yeah. And honestly, I I was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. I think the moral of this story is going to be lying is bad. And that's actually like compared to what we've gotten so far in this movie. That's great. Right. That's Mm. a real thing. That's true. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's solid at that point. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So. So anyway, so they check back in with Professor Shirk after making the plan to just lie to him about doing their homework. Right. Yeah. And Professor Shark is introduced as the greatest teacher in the ocean when all he does is hover in the exact same spot uh, like an NPC quest giver. Yes. Waiting for two fish, to, the same two fish to turn up. Yeah. We also learn that he has firm but gentle fins here. Again, <laughs> they are constantly appealing to people who are so fixated on hitting their kids that they want to make sure the shark teacher in the animated movie they're watching isn't a pussy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, so they lie to him about the homework. They say that oh, the, the the currents were too strong and we couldn't we couldn't do it. And he's like, you know, I a couple other students saw you fucking off and narked you out, so you're lying to me. What are the students? We've only <laughs> ever seen him with two. He's only ever been on screen with two fish. He has no other students. He's just imagined it. Fizzy, fizzy, maybe. <laughs> mm. We haven't. We've never seen Shark and Fizzy in the same place. I'm not saying that's like a Tyler Durden thing. Whether the same person. <laughs> oh. <like that. laughs> also, not saying it isn't. <laughs> Split, but with the fish from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that film is so shit. <laughs> All right, so but yeah, but so Professor Shark explains that he knows that they lied. He's very disappointed, and he chews them out all while wearing this like overjoyed smile about it, which is again <laughs> phenomenal. I wanted him to eat them as punishment. I thought he's an actual shark. There you go. Just eat them. Just eat them. It's fine. Just eat them. At this point, my notes are, Tubi, if you're listening, if you add a button so I can watch stuff at one and a half or two X speed, I'll give you 200 American dollars. (laughs) And the, the other thing is here, what Professor Shark tells him is they've got to go with Mr. Flips to go and see Mr. Sushi. And I thought, is this an execution? Because Mr. Flips definitely sounds like the name of Mr. Shark's enforcer. That is, uh-huh. a, yeah, that is yeah. a pseudonym given to him for what he does. And Mr. Sushi is absolutely the disposal guy. Oh, for obviously. A mafia yeah. Of course. Yeah. So like, this is an execution. Far yeah. up there for the chop. Yeah, he says you need to go talk to Mr. Sushi about moral purity, which, fun fact, is my new code for cunnilingus. So. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, right. No, he's like, I'll forgive you, but only after you go have a couple of boring conversation with characters we've never met yet. So so they head off to, to find Mr. Flips the dolphin. Now, apparently, news travels fast underwater because he's already heard about them being filthy fucking liars by the time they get there. <laughs> How? How has he heard that? They were having that conversation with Shark and then they swam directly to Mr. Flips. So has has Shark got some sort of uh, like a telephone line going on? He sent out a distress signal. <laughs> yeah, distress signal. Same, yeah. That explains it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And then he quotes the book of Timothy at them. He's like, yes. remember what the book of Timothy says? Mm. And I really want him to be like, Joy, you need to shut the fuck up when Muggles is talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he quotes the book of Timothy and then he quotes another Bible passage, asterisk. Right. Okay. This movie was so poorly done that I could not tell if that, they, they used the same Bible passage twice in a row. 
Yeah, yeah. Yep. And I thought, am I going mad? <laughs> right. I had to rewind it to make sure that I hadn't just imagined it. But they use the same fucking thing, exactly the same words. It's, 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 it's crazy. And, and then nobody acknowledges it. It's not a joke about how forgetful Mr. Flips is. Nobody seems to realize that it has happened. Worse than that, they just bob there with massive idiotic grins on their faces, <laughs> mocking me, <laughs> mocking me for it. This is where I was wondering, like, how many times would they have to repeat this before we would stop watching the movie? <laughs> <laughs> and then he gives one of my favorite lines in the whole movie. They're like, just, okay, so um, we also had to go see Mr. Sushi. Do you know where he is? And they and he says, he's four knots that way. <laughs> knots? Yes. Like, oh, how many parsecs would that be, Mr. Flips? Tell me how many. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Every moment in this movie screams, we need a break. So we're going to take one here. But first, let me give Actory the hard sell. Will anyone ever pick an item up? Will anyone ever physically interact with another character? Will anyone ever gesture in a manner appropriate to their dialogue? No, but keep listening anyway. And we'll be back in a couple of ounces with all the inert bloviation that is finding Jesus. Uh, but Mr. Mouse... Don't you know there's a big hungry bear in the forest? Oh, no. Oh, hey, Noah, Eli, um, what are you guys doing? Oh, hey, Marsh, I'm just taking care of Eli's teeth. He's reading on a story. Look, Eli, Noah, if you want to take better care of your oral health, why not try Quip? I doubt that witty repartee is going to chase away any cavities, Marsh. Yeah, I don't think that's right. No, hard. Quip. Quip makes oral health care easy by delivering all the oral care essentials that you need to care for your mouth. Wait, I am? Yeah, I didn't get a word of that. Oh, he said all the essentials. Right. Okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah, so they've got a fantastic electric toothbrush, but they've also got refillable gum that's sugar-free, has long-lasting mint flavor, and comes with a dispenser. Uh, refillable mouthwash, that's a four times concentrate, plus good for you and the planet. Floss, toothpaste, everything. I don't know, Marsh. All that stuff right to your door, that's got to be pricey, right? With stylish and affordable electric brushes starting at just $25, you won't be paying through the teeth for better oral health. And in addition to brush heads, Quip also delivers fresh floss, toothpaste, mouthwash, and gum refills every three months from $5. Shipping's free, so you can save money and skip the hustle and bustle of in-store shopping. Ah, uh, uh, oh, oh, well, uh, I, uh. Uh, he said, all right, Marsh, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Right, okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah, if you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Quip, the good habits company. Well, now I just feel silly for tucking his teeth in. Ah, so that's a blanket. Oh, well, it was a blanket. Uh, uh, uh. Marco said Joy head back to Professor Shock, who isn't a pussy and would totally belt him in a fucking mouth if they talked to him back. I assure you. Well, hello there, Muggles and Joy. What did you learn from Mr. Wiggles the Eel? That friendship is a gift from Jesus. Oh, you said it. You know, you two are such good friends. You remind me of Jonathan and David. <laughs> We're not that kind of friend, Professor. We're just good pals. What, what do you mean, that kind of friend? Because, you know, Jonathan and David were both... Very obviously gay. Gay? What pockpicock? I mean, Jonathan gave David the shirt off his back. Well, right, and all of his other clothes, too, because, you know, of the sex they were having together. The sex they were having? Yeah. Now you fish these days. Everything has to be sexual. Can't two men sleep in the bed naked 2,000 years ago without everyone assuming something? Uh, no. You know what? I've had enough of this, Muggles and Joy. I'm going home to watch my favorite friendship movie, Fried Green Tomatoes. You should watch it. You could learn a thing or two about friendship. Um, do we tell him? No, no, I don't think we do. No. Paul Lind! <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. And if you've been thinking to yourself, I wish they'd just make with the racism already, you are in for a treat because it is finally time for the high slash low point of the movie, Mr. Sushi. Ooh. Ooh. Now, 
so Mr. Sushi is a sushi roll. Mm. Yep. Whose voice is like as racist as an impression could possibly be. Absolutely. If you were trying to pick a fight with a Japanese person, the voice of Mr. Sushi yes. would be a good way to do it. Yeah. And I don't think I was prepared for this because when Sushi came on screen, I paused it and found myself involuntary screaming, oh my God, <laughs> that it was an actual floating bit of sushi. He's an actual floating bit of sushi. Why is he a floating bit of sushi knocking around the Pacific Ocean? No <laughs> real idea. The rest of them have all been fish. He is food, but he's got a little face and stuff. And I paused it to take in how he looks before he said a word. And I thought, <laughs> this is really bad. This is as bad as it gets. It's like a sushi with a little Japanese mustache, which is already pretty bad. He's got codro for hair, which is the inner reproductive tract of fish, which <laughs> I thought, fuck, that's dark. I just wanted, <laughs> yeah. I wanted Muggles and Joy to come to that realization during this conversation and just crumble in horror like they were looking at fucking Hannibal Lecter wearing yeah. <laughs> the face of a man he's killed. That didn't happen. This would be like if in fucking... The Goonies, there had been an adult character who was three men sliced into pieces, tied together with twine, with uteruses on his head. <laughs> and they were just like, you're right, friendship is important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then and then the accent happened, and oh, fuck, the accent. And he sort of sounded like a racist impression of a Japanese pirate. Yes. And then somehow he slid into more pirate and more Irish, and I thought, where did that make him less offensive? Like, they've <laughs> achieved the impossible where sliding into other stereotypical accents somehow makes this better. It's weird. It's like they've gone beyond racism now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're oh, looping back. As he just, as they're talking, he's just looking top left, top right, top left, top right, top left, top right, just on a loop. No matter what he's saying or what they're saying to him, he's, his eyes are just scrolling from top left to top right. So you've got, they had like two seconds of animation of him and yep. it's just on a loop. It's so weird. It's so weird. He's wearing dead fish guts as a hat, talking to them about the, <laughs> the benefit of friendship in an accent that I am not going to mimic. No, even no. Eli is not going to mimic. Even no. Eli is not going to mimic. I Before this record, I did a couple of bits where I was like, maybe I could do Mr. Sushi's voice. And I was like, eh, it's more of a 2007 episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my, my notes are filled with me transcribing phonetically what he's doing that I don't think I can read out, even though it's just a phonetic no. transcription of what so, was going on. He, he references Jesus Christ at one point. Okay. Like, just to give you an idea how bad it gets. Hmm. Yeah, but ultimately he racistly explains that Jesus forgives them for lying even though they're worthless pieces of shit. Yeah. And they don't deserve it. He tells them uh, the curse of God is on the house of the wicked, which is just classic kids movie stuff. Children's <laughs> show. Love it. Yeah. Hey, Pixar's been getting pretty dark lately. I wouldn't be surprised if that shit ends up in another one. <laughs> But he's like, but now that you you are repentant or whatever, I can take you to this sunken ship where you can study coral. And I was I, like, honestly, I was expecting them to stand there and go, wow, what a beautiful sunken ship just off camera. <laughs> <laughs> but there was actually a ship there. I was I was impressed. Yeah, I wrote in my notes. It's weird that we're so beaten down by this movie that we're so immensely grateful that there's an actual <laughs> ship. <laughs> So I think I know a little about the history of that ship because I think the plot to either Under the Sea or A Christmas Under the Sea is that they visit a sunken ship. So I think they bought that sunken ship for a different film. It was a central part of the plot of that different film. And now they're just getting their money's worth. Oh, there you go. Yeah. They're just going to bring that sunken ship whenever they can. Yeah, no. so I want to be super clear. Nobody interacts with the sunken ship. They don't go no. in or come out of it or lean against it or anything. <laughs> it's just in the background. That's all. <laughs> This is going to land for two audience members, which is always a great joke to put on your comedy podcast. But in Unity, this thing I'm learning right now, they have these pre-made backgrounds that you can use for you're just learning this video game, video game. So in the background, there's like a space war going on. And then I'm like, when you move the left click, it bounces the ball. That's the animation levels of this scene. Right. But yeah, so they're all happy. They promise they'll never lie again. And then we're finally done with that racist ass character and head back to the reef for the Professor Shark wrap up. I really wanted Professor Shark to be like, so, Mr. Sushi, problematic as fuck. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. 
they do say they've got a surprise for Shark, and I really hope they'd brought back Mr. Sushi for him to eat. Like, yeah, he <laughs> fucking deserves this. Did you see him? God, he fucking deserves it. If anyone deserves it, it's this fucker. Look at what he's wearing for a hat. <laughs> <laughs> also, they, they keep using the term moral purity throughout this yep. episode so in a weird. way that's just freaking me the mm. fuck out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so they, they surprise Professor Shirk by having done their homework after all, and then he's proud of them for having lied. <laughs> you learned your now now I'll tell you what, kids, next time if you don't behave yourselves, you're gonna go see Mr. Shish Kebab, and he's a real horror, let me tell you. <laughs> you guys wanna watch Scary Henry get torn apart by a couple of teenagers and a red lobster? No, <laughs> well then do your fucking homework. <laughs> All right, and then we get the weird-ass division scene again, right? Mm -hmm. This time, we open this next vignette with Muggles and Joy having just moved to a new coral reef because the strong current destroyed the last one. Now, I want to point out that the new coral reef is the exact same animation, pixel for fucking pixel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. They've done a wonderful job recreating it. Absolutely. <laughs> they, that is hats off to all of the hard work into all those fish who did that. That is that is a stellar job. Also, see if you can find the line in this intro scene that doesn't belong. Fish tastic. The fish will always rise. <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that was a, a weirdly white supremacist. Also, I just want to point out... Yeah, it's like white bait supremacist. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I want to point out that we did fish... Like, they had fantastic earlier. We're mm. devolving, right, as we go. <laughs> Guys, we really blew our load with fish fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah, so then they go see Professor Shark because that's how the episodes start, apparently. Yeah. yeah. They have this weird long conversation about how they should teach a Sunday school class. When they introduce Professor Shark, this is a very important line to me. They go, his school, a narrator later goes, his school has seen peril more than once. I really wanted a flashback to him in a war, right? He's just like tearing the throat out of another shark. Ah, the fish will always rise. Sorry, you kids were saying? Yeah, there's like a submarine going above, just dropping napalm all over his fish schools. No. <laughs> there's something happening He's here. dropping to his knees to Adagio's uh, Bob for strings. Yes. <laughs> See, I had, I was thinking like a, I had a Professor X vision right there, like from like X-Men United or something. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Uh, so... <laughs> But yeah, so he explains that they could do a class of their own. And then they're like, that's not the plot, is it? He's like, oh, hell no, no. Because then we'd have to have a bunch of student fish and everything. No, no, no. You're going to go talk to one person at a time again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so weird. Because he, he, he also tells them how proud he is for them and the work they've done reassembling the whole town they're in, bubble town that they're in. He's so proud of what they did before the episode started that we can't see. And I thought, am I allowed to talk about how proud I am of the hilarious jokes that I wrote and delivered before we hit record? <laughs> <laughs> Can I put that in his podcast as well? There's a weird line as well. Muggles tells Professor Shark, well, flattery will get you everywhere, Professor, which is one, a weird line, and two, a weird intonation of that line. Stop trying to fuck <laughs> your teacher, Muggles. Yeah, right. So, yeah, and, and also, by the way, so I, I feel like we have to emphasize that once again, the point here, the moral of this story as we lead into it and throughout will be, hey, if your house gets knocked down by a tornado or is destroyed in a fire and you lose everything that you own, try not to be a whiny little bitch about it, okay? Yeah, don't be so whiny. They, they even tell him, they even say to Shark, you know, we're honored to serve you, our teacher, and God, who, you know, sent the wave that destroyed our entire village just moments ago. <laughs> right. Right. And he's like, well, you know, you guys sure are upbeat about the recent disasters. Why don't you go see Mr. Boo Cakes? who is not doing as well with having been, you know, destroyed out of house and home. I love the every other system they have of naming fish either after the thing they are, Flippy the dolphin, mm. or just like Mr. The desk chair. There, great. <laughs> yeah. He's Mr. Desk chair. There you go. But after after we'd just seen Mr. Sushi, was anyone else expecting something really fucking weird from Boo <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, a minstrel fish was not out of the possibility. Oh, I thought it'd be just some other food stuff as well. Like we're not, we're not. We've learned from sushi. We're not consigned to the realm of aquatic mammals. Aquatic no, animals, you're, rather. You're we're right. in all. We're in, in the set of all things by this point. <laughs> 
Well, okay, so yeah, so they go off to, to check out Mr. Poo Cakes, but first, Pete the Pothead Trumpet Fish shows up as though he was like, their top donor on Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't let Marlo the Swordfish do what he did to me in that men's room and for me not to get a line in this fucking movie. I'm Pete the Pufferfish. How's it going? <laughs> and I swear to God, I, I spent so long looking through stock clip websites that I, I'm, I'm sure I saw Pete in one of those clips. And so when he came on screen, it felt like I was sort of seeing an actor that I was noticing. Oh my God, it's that guy. Oh, yeah. I'm like, that guy from that thing. <laughs> Marsh is just sitting around with his knees says, you know, that fish was in a Christian movie. <laughs> yeah, so but they introduce Pete quick like they're trying to sell more fucking toys and then he fucks off and then they catch up with Boo Cakes, who is, we learn at this point, a manta ray and not hmm. with a racist accent at least. Thank no, but he does man. have a haunted look in his eyes that I can only assume is the constant memory of the time he killed Steve Irwin. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so they should catch up with Mr. Boo Cakes and they're like, hey, Mr. Boo Cakes, our home was destroyed and, you know, we didn't pout and mope around about it all day. How are you doing? Yeah. And Mr. Boo Cakes is like, oh, I'm sad. And they're like, didn't we do this in the first episode? It was like, even momentum? about a homeless thing. Yeah, yeah it was. was. Woof. <laughs> yeah, right. And they're so their way of cheering him up is to just bitch at him for being so whiny, right? They're like, oh, it's not so bad. You still have your health and us. And Jesus. Yep. That's the extent of their help. Yeah. yeah. It's like the Bible says, if you're sad about your misfortunes, you're wicked. <laughs> That's literally yeah. in the fucking thing. And he, he, they quote uh, Jeremiah 8, 4. They say, you know, if a man goes the wrong way, he turns around and goes back. I'm not sure the Bible continues about the bit where the guy stops and then pats his pocket and then take, like mimes pretend that he's forgotten his wallet somewhere and that's where he turns <laughs> around and goes the other way just in case anybody's watching him. See, I paraphrased Jeremiah 8 4 in my notes and just wrote, I get knocked down, but I get back up again. Yeah! You're never going to keep me down. I also wrote that. <laughs> oh, yes. did you really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, the one you're thinking of, I, there was also Proverbs 1432, which is if you're sad about your personal misfortune, it's because you're evil. <laughs> <laughs> Boo Cakes is like, all right, man, I get that you have Bible verses and everything, but I'm still homeless and destitute. And Muggle says, I'm I'm not kidding here. Oh, don't talk about yourself like that, Mr. Boo Cakes. <laughs> so he does, but there's a, a line that he missed, which I think makes it even weirder. He says, but I'm just one manta ray. And he says, oh, don't talk about yourself that way. It's like, what? As a discrete entity? <laughs> How else is he going to talk about himself? <laughs> I am a continuum. I am part of the, the infinite legion. flow of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was so befuddled by that fucking yeah. lie. I am the universe inhaling. Come on, let's get, <laughs> let's get Zen on this fucker. <laughs> Have you guys read any David Icke? You got to get in there. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, no, but this at this point, it's become so fucking Republican because they're literally telling him like, hey, man, you know, don't stand around feeling bad person whose home was destroyed literally minutes ago. Get off your ass and do something about it. <laughs> right? That's literally the message that is being sent to us here. Yep. Yeah, 100%. This gold bricker walks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they're like, well, boo cakes, come with us. We've got a new place for you to live. We'll help you find a new seabed. So he goes along with him and he's like, yeah, guys, you know, I'm feeling better already. Maybe my misfortune was all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they do find him a new place to live. And it is it's perfect for him because it is pixel by pixel identical to the last place he lived. He's like, oh, yeah. Yes. I, I can see why you guys thought of me when you found this. This is exactly my sort of thing. It's like we walked out the right side of the image and came back in on the left side. <laughs> yeah. There is a super weird bit where Boo Kicks looks around and says, oh, this must be like 70 square feet or something. He's like, how... How does he do such a quick square footage yeah. assessment of the seabed? It's like, mate, I think it's bigger than that. Have, have another count. I think it's bigger. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but he's he's excited. His new seabed is even bigger than the seabed before. How are the fuck yeah. that's possible? And he agrees that everything is better now that they've told him to buck the fuck up. So they head back for the obligatory debriefing with Professor Shark, right? And then they're going to do the same Bible passage again. Yep. In case you forgot it, 
at least they did it with different characters this time as opposed to the same character twice in a row god those are the fucking straws we're clutching at now oh you changed the fish that was on screen when you repeated the bible passage best worst at least hey i got a paw patrol commercial at this point because i was watching it on tubi i fucking came from all the stimulus i was like whoa (laughs) moving objects and characters with names get the fuck out of here paw patrol Oh, and once again, that poor narrator has to come in and summarize it, you know, so they're like, and then, you know, the next minute happened. Mm. They told me this was only going to be a one day shoot. It feels (laughs) like it's been forever. And then, okay, we replay that intro for, as I wrote in my notes at the time, what I at least desperately hope is one final time. (laughs) And I find myself actively sad that these fish can't drown. I, like, oh, I, just, I, know it's, I know it's not technically possible, but Jesus, I don't ask you for a lot, God. Um, I, 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 I go out my way not to ask you for a lot, but just this one thing, just let me see these fish drown. <laughs> yeah, so, but this one, interestingly, it starts off with Joy pointing out to Muggles that the ocean is getting awfully polluted. And I'm like, wow, is this episode going to have an environmental message? We're done. Oh, we're done. <laughs> I'm not going to ever bring that up again. They know their audience, right? They were like, now, wait a second. I did throw a plastic bottle in the ocean. That's okay. If they mention the temperature of the water, they are swimming in. <laughs> I will punch my TV and call Jesus on yeah. them. <laughs> I thought it was like, you know, this place is getting full of things that don't belong, like plastic bottles and Mexicans. So this, right. is <laughs> this is my, this, yeah, it's only some. Build that wall. Oh, it's Mr. Taco. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Fish Taco. <laughs> <laughs> As horrifying as I am problematic. <laughs> Muggles, I'm filled with your mother. <laughs> so yeah, Joy's like, wow, this conversation is so generically banal. This must be the opening. I guess we're supposed to go see Mr. Professor Shark now, huh? Who, like, weirdly, we, we are introduced as being at the tippity top of his food chain, which is a weird thing to introduce right now, but like, Eat the baby fish then. Please eat these baby fish. This is the one thing you will put in that ocean to do. Just eat the fucking baby fish. I, as I wrote in my notes when he said that. I was like, did the narrator just make a veiled threat on Professor Shark's bam? <laughs> <laughs> and then they went to see Mr. Professor Shark, who could eat the fuck out of him if he wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so now we meet Professor Shark. He is very bummed that Fizzy didn't keep her word to go play with Rosie today. Okay. I feel like Professor Shark had something to do with this. I was psychotically imagining plots now because he's Mm. talking so hesitantly. I was like, what did Professor Shark have to do with this? Because he's like, well, there's a little bit of a mm, problem. I thought he was going to tell us, like, I'm technically not allowed near a playground anymore. (laughs) Can you guys go talk to Fizzy for me? (laughs) Do you guys want to hang out at my house? It turns out Megan's law doesn't apply underwater, so I'm fine. (laughs) Well, what, yeah, right. What I love about this is that, like, she, he says, you know, Fizzy didn't show up for her play date with Rosie, to which Muggles and Joy offer up, like, you know, eight or nine reasons why that might have happened other than malice on Fizzy's part. And every mm. one of them, Professor Shark's like, no, nah, I'm pretty sure she's just an evil, wicked piece of shit. No, this is a blood feud. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Shark was acting so fucking shifty here that he must have eaten one of them because he's introduced as tippity top of the food chain and then one of the other fish has gone missing. He's just trying to cover the fact that he's eaten that fish. Right, yeah, exactly. And he's he's deflating all the excuses they can think of. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. So, yeah, and and he's like, well, if Rosie doesn't have anybody to play with, why, we could just go find Fizzy. I'm like, I feel like there's another solution, but okay. (laughs) Go find Fizzy. I mean, what are we supposed to do? Play with Fizzy? Absolutely fucking not. Have you seen her? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So first it goes to see Rosie, who is a sad little seahorse. But of course, <laughs> despite being super sad and that being the plot, she is smiling the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I had totally checked out this film at this point. And, and a cutesy talking seahorse was not going to get me back <laughs> with with every single like syllable that she mangled into cutesy little dog. I'm a little seahorse. Oh, God, no, no. 
But what was amazing is she says like really destructive, scary shit. If you pay attention to it, they're like, oh, I'm sure it was a mistake. And she's like, have you thought of the idea that she just doesn't care? I'm going to kill myself and name her in my note. And you're like, oh, all right, fizzy. No, it's <laughs> she's she's pretty cynical. Everybody's pretty damn cynical on fizzy's motives here. Mm. And, and, and at this point, Muggles is basically, anyway, Rosie, don't be such a cunt. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> basically, his approach to here. Yeah. Well, and, and then they start trying to make excuses again. Once again, Rosie isn't buying it. But I love that the excuses all kind of boil down to like, you know, Fizzy's fucking dumb. Like Fizzy <laughs> is so fucking stupid. She might have just, you know, she might be stuck in her own goddamn bathroom <laughs> pushing instead of pulling. You know, Fizzy. <laughs> And I, I, at this point as well, I just couldn't help but, but think this is aimed at kids and some kids will lap this shit up. And this film is a more effective form of contraception than a condom. Like I can watch it. <laughs> like, I've made all the correct choices in my life to this point. There is no small child forcing me to sit through this hour of bullshit on a four hour loop. Essentially, this is right. my life is going in the right direction. Oh, God. So, okay, so they head out to see Fizzy. They, they basically make Rosie promise not to kill herself until they can get back. Right. Right. Now, Fizzy, this is, for the first time in the whole goddamn movie, a returning character. <laughs> I was so livid here. I was like, I demand a new fish. You've given me nothing, movie. You can't reuse the fish. What shocked me is that they had the same name for it, right? I expected mm. this one to just be Dave the Blowfish, right? <laughs> so here's a spoiler for some of the other films. The same fish models are in them with completely different names. And there is a professor shark who is their teacher, who is a different shark. He's a purple <laughs> yeah. shark with a really big oh. mouth. <laughs> Lack of consistency in the BTU. That's the Bubble Towns universe. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I wondered why you bought BTU.com on our Cobra credit card, but now, now I feel a lot Makes better. Makes a, a lot of sense. Yeah, so, but they find Fizzy the Blowfish, and damn it, if Fizzy didn't think the play date was tomorrow, she didn't realize today was fucking Thursday. Yeah. And that's the stakes. That's the stakes we got to play with. A cartoon fish forgot what day it was. Yep. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and also, honestly, I think Fizzy's just making some shit up at the last minute and is pretty good at it, because when she's trying to explain it, she's like, Oh, I thought it was, I thought today was Wednesday. You know, I'm really clumsy and my sense of direction is terrible. What the fuck does that have to do with knowing what day it is? <laughs> well, I, I bought furniture too because my last apartment was furnished. Okay, Fizzy, I get it. <laughs> I get it. That's a deep cut for scathing patrons. And this way it's like, uh, Fizzy, do you want to play tomorrow? And I want to be like, well, she says, uh, that's Friday, Friday, right? And I want her to carry on be like, oh, Friday, right? Um, yeah, I think I've, um, I think I might have a thing. I just need to check with um, <laughs> oh, I someone, so someone you don't oh. know. Um, I'll, I'll get back to you. I've got your number. I can give you a distress call. I'll just give you a distress call. I'll tell you my coordinates if, uh, if I'm, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'll send a yeah. distress signal. <laughs> so yeah so and they, they're like well and she's like oh i feel terrible rosie must feel awful she's like well hey why don't you come back and apologize in the fish now mm. that is a fish flesh joke just hanging out there like eli was in a hurry on his headline puns or something <laughs> i just like as that happened i imagine like heath just appeared next to me and stared at the screen <laughs> angrily <laughs> So anyway, all, all three of them go back to see Rosie and cheer her the fuck up. Yeah. There's also, okay, you guys, please talk me down from the ledge on this one, right? At one point here, Rosie says, don't worry, I'm a pink fish. We're the most loyal kind of fish. And I'm like, they they just said pink skin is better than the other colors, right? That's like actually in the fucking movie, right? Yeah, and just, like, oh, yeah, just a catfish that. that looks like Charles Murray comes floating up. You know, I think <laughs> it's a really interesting thing that pink fish have a different IQ. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's another fish in the background with a set of calipers pointing out the uh, <laughs> little dimple in the back of the back of the shark's head. So, yeah. <laughs> Suddenly they've got scary Henry up on like posters all around Bubble Town. <laughs> so yeah, so they, they fucking Fizzy and Rosie bump their play date up until the next day and all is right with the world. That was the plot. It is now resolved. So they can go back for the fucking wrap up with Professor Shark scene one last time. This feels like he, something he could have solved. Like he yep. brought in <laughs> two extra fish to go talk to the fish he was worried about. And all you need to do is talk to that fish. So like, God, just do your fucking job. 
just just get out just stop bobbing up and down in the <laughs> archway to your school and get out there do your fucking job he's very clearly got an under the table boner and he's been making excuses this entire movie <laughs> not to leave <laughs> Well, he has, but at the same time, he's like air humping the water around him. So he's not doing anything to to de-escalate that situation. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, the plot of this entire movie is them getting around the fact that they didn't get any animation of Professor Shark moving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I also want to throw out there that like during this last scene that was like, oh, OK, they're going to see Professor Shark. I'll admit it. I tuned out a little bit. Maybe I checked Twitter. And when I tuned back in, Professor Shark was talking about the Israelites killing the Ammonites. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yes. Yes. First of all, he says, when you break a promise, it makes Jesus sad. And I'm like, of all the reasons not to break a promise, you managed to find one that's meaningless. And then he <laughs> says, it's like the book of Joshua. Now, I wrote in my notes when he said that, I paused the movie and I wrote, is it going to be a genocide part? Because most of the book of Joshua is. And it was. Yep. Yep. It was uh, the genocide <laughs> the part. Kid, the kids movie ends with a Bible quote about the Lord handing over the enemies of Israel to Joshua's armies. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's what the shark had to say about forgetting play dates <laughs> with your seahorse friends. <laughs> if I said that, People would be like, hey, man, can I check your crawl space? But if a cartoon shark says it, <laughs> it's fine. It's suddenly, yeah, right. So the, the, apparently the reason we shouldn't skip out on play dates is because God will turn us over to the Israelites. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Well, Marsh, we cannot thank you enough for making you suffer through this one. I mean, And I mean that in a can't make a square circle kind of way. <laughs> but if our listeners want to make it up to you by checking out your other stuff, remind them where they should go. Yeah, you can listen to uh, Skeptics with a K where I talk about uh, sort of skeptic investigations that uh, myself and my course are doing. You can hear me talk to people who believe odd things on Be Reasonable or you can read The Skeptic at skeptic.org.uk where I'm the editor. And there has just been a string of fantastic stuff on Skeptic since you took over, man. That you have really revitalized. It's been a, become a great resource. Yeah, I'm really pleased with the stuff we've been putting out. I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's skepticism the way that I think skepticism should be done. I agree 100. percent And well, that's going to do it for our review of Finding Jesus. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to dip our toes back in these waters again. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, you lucky so-and-so, you'll be missing a real treat because we're going to be watching Newsboys Down Under the Big Top. I'm missing Newsboys? Mm. I might show up for that episode after all. Okay. <laughs> so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 324 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh for hanging out with us today, and a perhaps even a huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scanning ADS Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Red, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email God Awful Movies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Rod Slot Me with Dross on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosting, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. Wow Now Entertainment released eight new animated films during the recording of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> In the deleted scenes, Mr. Sushi commits seppuku. <laughs> Keith will be reviewing Finding Jesus 2 by himself in a very special <laughs> solo episode. <laughs> Christmas 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I went through like 30 different variations of like under the C-SPAN kind of jokes there, but none of them. <laughs> Just couldn't quite get it to fit. Yeah. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.